journalism is often characterized by its monolithic and immense scale. That all Belgrade and Serbia have to offer are graffiti-ridden, concrete brutalist tower blocks. That's not the case. Hi everyone and welcome. If you are a fan of grey and concrete brutalist architecture, you've come to the right place. Once again, I am in the city of Belgrade, Serbia, one of my favourite cities in the world. And I say once again because as part of my final series of videos, Belgrade is absolutely an iconic legacy character location, i.e. I've filmed many videos throughout the city in the past and I thought I would come back one last time to cover one of my favourite subjects. I've already said it, brutalism. So right now I'm in Novi Belgrad, New Belgrade, which is where you will find a lot of the brutalist architecture in Belgrade. Look behind me, there is, I think, the police building. I've already been told off for filming, sorry. And also um, the stock exchange and other buildings as well. I filmed videos in this area before. You can check the link out up above. I went to the Gen X Tower, or Gen X, how do you pronounce that? I can never remember. And also the Eastern Gate, which is actually over the other side of Belgrade. But we're gonna cover some old locations, but also some new ones, if you know what I mean that I haven't covered before, so let's get going. So if you don't know much about brutalism, it became popular in the 60s and 70s, not only in the former Yugoslavia, but pretty much everywhere, the UK, throughout Europe, even in Mexico there is brutalism. Shocking, right? And I know it's not to everyone's taste. I know a lot of Serbs that say it's absolutely disgusting and ugly, but you know, we don't have to like everything in life, do we? But I like it. Yeah, on the other side of this building, that's where I got told off for filming. But just look at this absolutely ginormous piece of concrete jutting out like that. I've never seen these before. You've got all these pictures up here of kind of like what it looked like back in the day, 60s, 70s. You know, that one looks kind of quite deserted. You know, it's like Dubai before they started building everything. And brutalism is often characterized by its monolithic and immense scale in terms of residential buildings, museums, hotels, government buildings, you name it, you can pretty much find it everywhere. It's starting to rain, bloody brilliant, but that kind of ties in with the theme actually of grey and gloomy. Yeah, this is the Belgrade Stock Exchange. And as well as the concrete hulk, you've got those horrendous kind of bronze windows or gold. Is that meant to signify like, you know, the stock exchange aspect? Not far from the aforementioned tower, I'm at this church, there appears to be a wedding going on, or at least close to ending, because there's the guys with all their brass instruments and drums. These kind of rather ghostly play areas with these sort of concrete sitting areas with swings and stuff everywhere are kind of part and parcel of this sort of area not only in Serbia but you know you see this sort of thing well everywhere really Belarus Ukraine UK maybe back in the day not so much now I don't know I know we've been here before but you know it's like going to Paris and not going to the Eiffel Tower I couldn't not come here and honestly I've never got drone shots here before so <laughs> here we are so um yeah I've actually been up that tower to the top floor in a previous video you can't really see much out the windows because they're a little bit sort of dirty as you'd expect but that side is like the residential side this side I believe was like a business side which is no longer in operation I went down there into the lobby bit which is a bit sort of retro 70s you know in uh, one of the last videos and up the top there you've got this restaurant which someone told me was meant to revolve but it never did yeah and I think there's a tour you can do well one tour guy that I spoke to once he was trying to organize it but I don't know if it's an actual thing Every time I come here, I am truly flabbergasted by this, especially that huge column there of circular concrete blocks. 
and just the the grayness and almost bleakness with the graffiti around the bottom and so on and again just like the um, stock exchange building you know you've got this kind of mirrored window so basically Joseph Tito at the time wanted to highlight Belgrade as like an international modern city and when world leaders like Margaret Thatcher and Ronald Reagan and also Queen Elizabeth came here to stay at Hotel Yugoslavia I believe when they flew in they would see this western gate as an icon for Yugoslavia at the time and as I said earlier the eastern gate did I say that earlier over the other side uh, of the city was like its mirror image if you know what I mean although that's very different as you can see now um, yeah in there is like the lobby bit but check out the old video for that right it's a little bit later I'm down underneath this concrete overpass heading further into New Belgrade actually I'm getting back towards regular Belgrade but whatever there's the view back to the Genex Tower oh there's a wedding Happy wedding, people! Pause the dove! Or something. Right, excuse the fact that I look like a drowned rat, but it has been raining, all right? Um, I've just been to Televizorka up that way, which made its cameo appearance after appearing in a past video. It's the place with the windows that kind of look like TV screens, hence the name. A friend of mine, Natasha, she said to me, that looks disgusting! She wasn't Scottish, she's from Serbia. But, um, you know what? I quite like it. Um, as I said before, we don't have to like these things, but I do, and I like Block 23. I think I've been here before too. Yes, I have been here before. This is actually where I started a video. It was in that little sports area down there. And I think I said something like that these buildings look like out of Inception. You know that scene where the buildings all bend and everything? Well, it's like that. And this one just kind of goes on forever. Shit. almost slipped in the mud and um, if you're from Belgrade or a Serb in general you're probably thinking what the fuck is this guy doing walking around a residential area in Belgrade with pipes and stuff being amazed by it but the reason is is believe it or not there are some people in the world that aren't familiar with this kind of thing or maybe appreciate a bit of normality instead of the usual sort of overly painted tourist sites and stuff like that. I like this sort of thing and many people do as well and uh, you know I would feel the same if someone was walking around like Hounslow in West London looking at like a chip shop saying wow it's a chip shop. I'll get a grip. I wonder how many actual flats there are in these buildings. I dread to think there's block 23 over there and block 22 is over the other side of the road but it is uh probably the most monolithic example of brutalism in Belgrade. So I just got some epic drone shots from the top of the building looking down. I wanted to go all the way down but there were like washing lines uh, across so I didn't want to you know lose the drone. What's through this pipe? Oh it's echoey. Brilliant! Um, it's like the caves in Petnica again except probably no bats. It goes all the way through look. Still coming back to me now I did go up one of these buildings this is where I got stuck in a lift so here is the middle bit this might have actually been where I filmed I don't know you know they're all pretty much identical but just look at that all the way up to the sky you can see the washing lines I'm assuming that's what they are or electricity cables I don't know I quite like how it's designed actually because let's look at this concrete wall up there Crazy. And you might think from looking at it from like the other side that it's just flat all the way through as you get, but it's got this central area in the middle. The things I do for YouTube, oh bloody hell, I'm in this flood just to get a shot like that. My feet are completely wet. I hope you appreciate it. This is Sylvia the dog. 
Who's Sylvia? Is she a famous dog? Like, maybe she belonged to one of the residents. I don't know. But you get nice street art here too. You always get the sense of community on these blocks, I must say. You know, you've got these notice boards with lost dogs. Hope you find him. And you know, other notices as well. And of course, down the bottom here, you always have all these little shops. Many of them like independent shops. You had DM back there. You know, all of them very, um, well, some of them, you know, well kitted out, you know, like that salon. Okay, people, as you've probably gathered, it's the next day and the weather has turned, for once in my life, for the better. It's a case of sun's out, not very muscular arms out. I have walked from Nesmihalova all the way to this forest, Timothy Byford Forest, on the way to my next brutalist, socialist, modernist location. So Timothy Byford, who the hell was he? Well, like me, he was English. He was from Salisbury. You know where the Russian spies went and pretended to be on holiday, but really they had a biotoxin. But anyway... Um, he was a director of children's TV shows in the former Yugoslavia. I think he came here in the 70s and got married. And he also directed Blue Peter, classic UK TV show from my childhood. Honestly, before a few days ago, I'd never heard of him, but I assume he became well known in Serbia because of his work. And supposedly this forest was renamed after him because he wanted to protect a particular species of bird, which is native to here. Well done. This forest appears to be quite big. Those shadows are annoying, aren't they? And um, big as in long and narrow. I'm kind of in this area, heading to there. I appear to have David Bowie Starman in my head for some reason. But anyway, here are some of the birds you can see here. Oh, I recognise that one. Oh, there are owls. Beautiful. I do like birds. Sylvia! <laughs> it's that dog again. Right, I assume I can get there through this market. This market's nothing special. You know, just a load of old crap as you would find in any market anywhere. I'm in Banyitsa, otherwise known as Little Spa, you know, Banya Spa. And I've wanted to come here since the dawn of time because so many people have recommended it to me as a great example of brutalist architecture. There are five towers, affectionately known as the Five Idiots. Well, don't panic because number six is here. <laughs> I'm in this little central playground, getting a lot of strange looks from locals. Why change the habit of a lifetime, Serbia? <laughs> but look at this. Here's one of the idiots. What a monstrosity, in a good way. There's a Zastava. And Banica is kind of like a city within a city along the blue and green corridor, whatever that is. Like something to do with the Banya thing. And you will find as you come out of the center of Belgrade, which I would absolutely recommend to do, I just bit my cheek, sorry. Areas like Senyak, Topchided Park, it's all very green as we've seen in the forest. And as we can see here, we can't really see the buildings. Oh, bloody hell, the sun. You might think that all these buildings are identical, but actually they're all slightly different, apparently. It kind of reminds me of a combination of the legendary Hotel Zlatoboard in Užice, where I'm staying, and Block 23, you know, places we've seen before. The clouds are absolutely racing across the sky, as per the wind comment. I hope there is not another storm coming. Once again, amazing street art. Philip. Filipovich. Clearly my reading is coming along. Someone's glasses just fell from a great height. I've helpfully put them there, although one of the lenses is gone. That could have taken my eye out. Pardon the pun. It's another swimmer. This time Slobodan Nikic. Apologies if that's wrong. 
like were these swimmers from here or are these swimmers from here? I don't know. Oh, is he on Instagram? Oh no, that's the artist. <laughs> Apologies, your neck probably hurts just as much as mine does in this video. We're looking up a lot, but let's look down here because as with all the other places, you know, it's very much community-like, you know, you've got pet shops, hairdressers, salons, little restaurants everywhere. And as I said about it being a city within a city, look, it kind of is. guy playing Hotel California. Everyone always seems to be playing that. That seems to be the song of choice. Well, this market is certainly not selling crap. We've got flowers, we've got honey, we've got homemade, I mean, homegrown vegetables and things. Nice. It's all very colorful. Fruit and veg everywhere. And I think through here is, um, is this the one we came through before? I can't remember. Commando. Luckily, I have underwear on, and we're on our way to our final stop in this video, which you might remember as the Eastern Gate. We can see it in the distance there. It's a bit of a walk, so let's go. So off camera, I've done a lot of walking today and yesterday. I think my knees are about to buckle, but never mind that because we are finally at our final stop for this video. The Eastern Gate. I swear this is different to last year. I could be mistaken. You know, this artwork does get refreshed every now and again. It looks very new, I must say. It's really windy here and all. It's good to be back here. This is, you know, an old school classic location, well from last year. But um, yeah, these three towers, just like the Western Gate, are absolutely monolithic, imposing, monstrous, all those words I normally use to describe this brutalist, modernist, whatever it is, architecture. I know there's always arguments about that in the comments. Um, hence, I'm saying both. Um, yeah, Rudo is what they're called, one, two, and three, it's named after the designer, if I remember correctly, and there's signs everywhere, falling masonry or whatever from the facade. There's a plane up there, can you see it? Disappearing behind the building. Yeah, just like with Vanitsa and all the other stuff we saw in the rain in Novi Beograd. Very typical grey, tall, reaching to the skies. And there's the one I'm standing in front of. They're all around. Now, I probably should have said this last year when I was here, but firstly, if you are from Serbia and you're watching this, maybe this is the first video of mine you've ever seen, you might quite understandably be thinking that I'm trying to imply that all Belgrade and Serbia have to offer are graffiti-ridden, concrete, brutalist tower blocks. That's not the case whatsoever. It's purely the topic of this one video. And secondly, if you are a fellow foreigner thinking of coming to the Balkans and thinking of coming to a place which isn't Croatia, God forbid, yes, there are other countries, don't be put off. If this isn't your thing, don't worry. There's a lot more to see in Serbia. This is just one aspect of the country among many, many, many aspects. So shameless plug, check out my other videos. <laughs> Hello Angel, it wouldn't be a Serbia video without a Serbia dog. So apologies if you don't like this sort of thing. Oh no wait, that's first season David talking. Final season David says, I don't really give a shit. You know, ultimately this is something that I enjoy and I'm fascinated by, therefore I will experience it. You know, in life, let's stop worrying about pleasing other people. Quite honestly, it's pathetic, desperate, and mentally damaging. There, I said it. Anyway, next time for episode 10 of my 2022 Serbia series will be somewhere completely different in Vrednjačka Banja. I hope that was right. For something absolutely unbrutalist. So, stay tuned for that one. Don't forget to subscribe for my remaining 12 videos before I ditch this channel. And I'll see you next time. <laughs> Catch you later.